Welcome back, everyone. I know, I'm know. i sure you noticed that I have a lot of different hats. Well, I always wear different hats in life. But that's something I do. I like hats, you know. I don't have much hair, you know. Although, you got to remember something. Grass don't grow on a busy street or in an airport. Remember that. So I wear my hats. Now, talk about Johnny DeFranzo a little bit, okay? Johnny, I know Johnny when Johnny was a burglar. I don't think Johnny was ever an armed robber. At least I never heard of him sticking up any places. But Johnny was a burglar with these same guys, Joey Ange and Richie and a couple other guys. And they were from Melrose Park, actually Melrose Park. And then when they start earning money, remember, in order to become sort of untouchable with the alpha, you got to be a good earner. So guys like Johnny DeFranzo and Joey Andrak, they had guys that hang with them, hung with them, and they would get guys that would do bookmaking, illegal bookmaking, and then them guys would get guys. So they'd form a group of guys. There was a lot of money in gambling. So Johnny eventually started making a lot of money. And I don't ever remember Johnny putting money on on juice. I don't remember that. I mean, he may borrow people, but he, Sam D. Matt Sam was the guy that was controlling the juice money then. So, but Johnny, I never looked at him as a boss. I would never respect him as a boss. I just had no respect for this guy. Something about him. Now, I stole with his brother, Joey. Joey DeFranzo. Joey was all right. We call him the hound dog. Because he'd always chase that buck down, Joey. And it was, to me, like, to me, I always felt as though they were a dysfunctional family, but they weren't. And uh, as I said, the first, when I first met Johnny, Tony came up to me and introduced me to Johnny DeFranzo. And we all had cars. Johnny had, a, I believe he had a Chevy Impala. Tony had a Dodge and I had a Ford. And they all had high powered engines in them. So we went on Cumberland Road and we raced them to see who had the fastest car. They were called work cars. We used them to steal them. I beat them all. I'm sure they didn't like it, but I beat them all. It was a column shift at the time. So that's one of the first meetings with Johnny. And then I, you know, you heard this, you heard that. And then Johnny went into the car business and he opened up car lots and he started selling cars and stuff like that. Uh, basically, that's all I know about Johnny. As far as looking at him as a boss, he probably was, but he'd never, I'd never allow him to boss me. Joey Lombardo was bigger than Johnny DeFranzo. They say the Grand Avenue crew. Joey Lombardo was much bigger than Johnny. I don't. I don't ever remember seeing them talking together. Actually, I gotta tell you, they honestly got truth. No, people say Joey was related to Joey Andriaki. He may have been. I don't know. Joey, that spell I had with Joey Andriaki, Joey wasn't even involved in that. So wouldn't you think that Joey would have talked to me about that if he was related to the Andriakis? I don't know. He may have been. I'm not disputing that. But uh, Joey was the guy, not Johnny. All right? Let's clear the air. And then there's a lot of people out there that think they know more than me. They may. But I remember, I was on the inside. I wasn't just the person that heard this bullshit. I knew who to watch out for. I knew what territory I was in, who I could screw over, who I couldn't screw over if I wanted to stay alive. So I made it my business to know all of these things, along with a lot of other crooks, if you wanted to stay alive. i give you an instance. We, we, I, we did a burglary in Elmwood Park. Wound up with uh, cash, not much, 500. Uh, mink coats, jewelry. You're not supposed to burglarize in Elmwood Park. Come to find out, when we tried to sell the merchandise, that the guy was a bookmaker. 
and he worked for he worked for uh, Joey uh, Gagliano and Willie Messina. So when I tried to push the furs, Vic Splacho, Tony's brother, told me, "Where'd you get these from?" I saw them at Park. He said, oh, "He said bookmaker got robbed over there, and he's claiming he lost five thousand. And I said, "He didn't lose no five thousand. I said, "There was five hundred dollars there, five thousand. He said, "Really?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, Willie Messina, I'm gonna tell. I have to tell Willie. Willie worked for Jack Cerrone. I like Willie. We Willie, nice guy, man's man." So Willie meets me in a restaurant the following day. And he said, what's the story? And I tell him. He said, there was no 5,000 or 500, Willie. He said, that son of a bitch told us he got robbed for 5,000. He said, that's part of the money he takes in on the booking operation. <laughs> I said, the guy's beating us out of money. Not for long, he said, not for long. He's probably sweating in his pants right now, thinking about it. Hope you guys don't get caught. He says, you can keep the first, keep the jewelry. He says, we'll straighten us out. But don't steal no more in Alma Park, Frankie. I said, all right, Willie, all right, Willie. You know, he, he, they didn't want to heat up their the territory that they lived in, these guys. So we never went back to Alma Park because there was too many places you could rob them. And uh, I don't know whatever happened to that bookmaker. <laughs> but you see how they lie? Anyway, that's the story there. Hey, a little shout out to John's World 100. He asked me a question. I'm going to try to answer it. Uh, he asked me, are there any fine restaurants in Chicago? Well, I'm sure there's a lot of fine worlds in Chicago. Have I been there recently? I think you asked me that question, though. Yeah, I was there last Easter. Uh, I went to a place they call Hole in the Wall Gang. It's in the suburb. Good food. Still good food. Of course, back in the day when I was there, Gennady's was the Italian restaurant that we used to go to, Gennady's. Now, it's been many years since I dined in restaurants, except for a year ago, and that was that place called Hole in the Wall. Uh, you're not going to find any many bad restaurants in Chicago as far as Italian food goes. Now, if you ask me that same question about Vegas, I can name a lot of bad ones, but they probably sue me. I, you know, I, do I know about New York restaurants? No. New York people eat different than we do. Everybody eats different. You know, I don't care for their pizza, their food. They don't care for our pizza and our food. I understand that. It's all about your taste buds. But John's World, I hope I was able to answer. John's World 100. Keep on watching, brother. You're going to enjoy what you see. Hey, Nick Hewitt, little little shout out to you, brother. I see you asked me a question. Now, I don't know anybody from Oak Lawn. You know, Chicago is a territorial city. If you were from Oak Lawn, you, you kept with them people. If you were from Elmwood Park, same thing. Grand Avenue, Cicero, everybody had a district. Oak Lawn, I, never, I didn't expand myself out there. If I had to, I would. Only thing I know about, the, I believe that's the south side of Oak Lawn. The only thing I know about that place is that El Taco controlled it, and that's where they had the, the chop shops. But that's the best I could do for you, Nick. I wish you well, buddy. But keep on asking questions. You might have something I don't know about. I know about. Hey, Royal, a little shout out to you, too. You asked me a question. Uh, I believe you asked me if we ever got hurt or shot or anything, what would we do? How would we go about it? We can't go to the doctor, the hospital. I can tell you a little story about that. There's a lounge in Las Vegas that we patronized, Tony and I and all the wise guys. So Tony was in there with a scuttle. I call a scuttle a broad, a girl, a lady. So he's in there with a scuttle. And he's going to bring her home. Her name was Sherry. One of many girls that Tony dated. Took care of. So he says, I'll be right back. She lives down the street, the apartment complex. I said, all right. So about an hour later, he comes walking back in the lounge by himself, and he's limping. I said, what'd you do, twist your ankle? He said, no, you ain't going to believe this. Some guy tried to rob me. I said, what happened? He said, well, I'm bringing her to our apartment. This guy pops up between the cars. He's got a rifle. 
He's telling me, give me your money. And he's crying, I need your money. He don't know who Tony is. It's a stick up. So Tony's got his hands up in the air and he's going like this. Take it easy, take it easy. Don't, don't take it easy. And he grabs the, the barrel of the gun and he twists it around. And as he's twisting it around, the kid's arm's going up. Kid pulls the trigger. Shoots Tony in the foot. Tony's got the gun, he's got it on the kid. Kid says, please, please don't call the police. I got my wife and kids, I got to feed them. Please, please. Well, we ain't going to call the police on this guy. I wouldn't, nor would Tony. Tony says, get the fuck out of here. He runs the kid out of there. So now he sits down. I said, what are you going to do? You want me to bring you to the doctor, the hospital? No, no. He's going to be in the headlines. He says, let me call Joey Cusimano. He's got a vet. He says this is a good friend. Maybe his vet could do something for me. So he calls Joey Cusimano. Joey comes over to the tavern, him and Tony leave. Hey, Tony comes back a little later, he's got, a, he's got his foot wrapped up. <laughs> the, the veterinarian fixed the, the bullet hole. <laughs> fixed the bullet hole. What, we, what would any of us do? Of course we'd try to go to a vet. You know, I mean, they work on animals. We're like animals too, right? So they, they could take care of it unless it was something really bad. So that's what we would do. I mean, that's not the first time that's happened that I've heard of that happening with guys that went to vets, veterinarians, to get a gunshot wound fixed or a stab wound. I can remember one time I got stabbed in the back, and I went to the vet and he sewed me up in the back. It was, a, it was an instance on the street. I was with another guy, and we had a fight with a couple of black guys, and uh, the guy stuck me in the back. Uh, and they ran off, and I was bleeding bad. And I didn't want to go to the doctor, the hospital, because then they, you know, all this inquiry and all that bullshit. So I went to a vet. That's back in Chicago years ago. They sewed me up. Thank you, Royal, for the question. Keep the questions coming in. All right? I'm here for you people. Let me get the shit all off my chest. I got a lot of stories to tell. A lot. So I'm going to be around for a while. You have a good day. God bless. Hit that button. Subscribe.